It is not surprising that thanks to the notes from the past that our ancestors left, we can now see what happened 100 and even 1,000 years ago. Homo sapiens live on Earth for a tiny period of time. So tiny that even if the history of modern man were a hundred times longer, it would still begin 35 million years after the extinction of the dinosaurs. And this is what we consider the most daring estimates, according to which the first Homo sapiens appeared in Africa 300,000 years ago to evolve into fans of anime and Fortnite. The Homo genus has gone through a long journey, during which other versions of man managed to visit the Earth and completely disappear. You've probably heard about the popular Neanderthals, but there were others. Before we talk about them, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and the like button and we will continue. It's worth refreshing your memory of our family tree. In a simplified form, first these are tiny mouse-like mammals, then monkeys, then Homo erectus, and after that, actually Homo sapiens. In reality, our family tree is much more complex and is still a topic of debate. So, for example, the oldest placental mammal, giving birth to young plus or minus in the style of modern humans and other mammals, is now considered Jeremia sinensis. A tiny rat-like creature ran across the territory of what is now China, not 30, not 60, or even 100 million years ago. The age of the find in the journal Nature was estimated at 160 million years. For a second, this makes the rat, even according to the most conservative estimates, 70 million years older than the Tyrannosaurus. So the history of our species began almost simultaneously with the era of dinosaurs. Well, as a consequence, the phrase that man descended from a rat and not from a monkey begins to make sense, although it is worth remembering that there was definitely no rat in the modern sense, Jeremia sinensis definitely did not exist. What follows is even more interesting. It is traditionally believed that rats and monkeys parted ways to form little animals named Purgatorius Unio. It appeared about 66 million years ago, managed to introduce dinosaurs, and is now considered the oldest primate-like creature. Then there was the incredible Archisebus Achilles, the first true tree-dwelling monkey. Its age is 55 million years, and it is already quite a modern-looking primate, which no one would notice if placed in a modern zoo. Here the paths of the ancestors of humans and the rat finally diverged, and a little later the paths of different branches of the development of primates began to diverge, first into prosimians and apes. The name of the first suborder may seem offensive, but in fact, prosimians have quietly survived into modern times. These are, for example, everyone's favorite lemurs, but we are of course interested in apes. Their common ancestor has long been thought to be proconsul, who lived some 18 million years ago. Now his title is being disputed, but what is important to us is that at this stage, we are faced with the first of the interesting extinct branches of human development. A dozen evolutionary branches later, modern humans emerged from Proconsul, but there was also a parallel branch, and this is Gigantopithecus. They are quite humanoid monkeys, extinct literally 100,000 years ago. According to experts, they grew up to 4 meters and weighed half a ton. Gigantopithec's brain volume was noticeably larger than that of gorillas. For a second, this puts them in the same weight category as Pithecanthropus, which, of course, were not scientists, but ultimately evolved into us. The smartest gorilla, Coco, spoke sign language and understood 2,000 English words. And we can safely assume that Gigantopithecus had no worse potential. There is a theory that in some excavations there are very large tools that our ancestors were definitely not in size. We cannot reliably exclude the theory that Gigantopithecus at one time, such people mastered some tools. But for unknown reasons, they died out, leaving us only relatives in the person of modern orangutans who, if anything, by many scientists are considered the smartest animals after humans. Well, let's move on and talk about our next ancestor. This is Australopithecus, which appeared about 4 million years ago. After 2 million years, the Hama genus separated from them and with it Paranthropus robustus, or the massive Paranthropus. It is still very ape-like, handsome, with a flat and even slightly concave skull. It's not worth looking at it from high, our ancestors are not far gone. And the massive Paranthropus's foot was similar to a human's, they also successfully mastered bone tools, walked on two legs, and like us, they were omnivores, and also healthy. Well, not as healthy as another offshoot of Australopithecus, Paranthropus boise. At 5 feet tall, they could not weigh up to 200 pounds and had huge jaws. Otherwise, they were not particularly different from the previously described Paranthropes. Just as we already mentioned, they became extinct. 
This round of the evolution game was left to the Homo family. It would seem that it was two million years ago and the further history of our species must be terribly boring. But in fact, from that moment the real action began. For every species of Homo sapiens that has survived to the present day, there are as many as 16 extinct ones. We will not mention the most popular Neanderthals. I would like to imagine the appearance of a person, Florisian, a truly unique parallel branch of development, if only because these are real hobbits from the Lord of the Rings. But according to the real world version, they even lived in caves, the most studied of which is Liang Bua Cave in Indonesia. There they immediately found 16 remains of people of the species. Florisca is the best preserved species and is a beauty standing 3 feet 5 inches tall and weighing about 55 pounds. While being an adult, the brain is literally smaller than that of a modern chimpanzee. But don't worry, from the point of view of evolution, less does not mean worse. You and I now have even smaller brains than the first representatives of Homo sapiens. But that didn't make us any dumber. At least not all of them. When Floresca was found, all hell broke loose among anthropologists. Someone said that this is just a sick representative of Homo sapiens with a congenital disease. Someone announced absolutely identical to modern man hobbits. But someone noticed that the remains of a tiny elephant were discovered on the same island. That is, miniatureness may be a feature associated with the isolation of the local fauna from civilization. One way or another, these hobbits mastered the tool perfectly. Most likely they could communicate. And according to some estimates, they became extinct only 50,000 years ago, almost later than the Neanderthals. Another of our extinct relatives is Denisovan man. The history of the species is so complicated that without the agents, Scully and Mulder, it seems that no one will ever figure it out. In short, in China and the USSR in the 80s, several remains were found that do not fit Neanderthals or anyone else. So they decided to distinguish the people found in Denisova cave into a separate subspecies. To be more precise, not people, but literally a couple of teeth and a phalanx of a finger, there are almost no other remains of Denisovans. But thanks to DNA research, scientists clearly state that the bones found belong to a completely different branch of human development. Moreover, the differences between Neanderthals and us are estimated at 202 nucleotides. While there are 385 Denisovans, that is, these were relatives even more unlike us, most of whose history is still shrouded in mystery. Everyone is probably aware that modern people carry from 1 to 4% of Neanderthal DNA, depending on the region. This is understandable, it can be cold in caves and at least someone wants to snuggle, but modern Melanesians have as many as 6% traces of Denisovans found in their DNA. That is, either the Denisovans lived on most of the territory of Eurasia or somehow a detachment of Homo sapiens passed through their cave to Altai, had a cool party there with mating, and the next day they went further to Southeast Asia. In any case, the Denisovans are in some ways no less heritage than the Neanderthals. And the more paradoxical is that archaeologists never found any sane remains. In short, call Scully and Mulder, they will solve everything. Well, let's return to the hobbits. In 2007, another strange bone was found in Kalau Cave in the Philippines. It seems to be human and even relatively modern, but very small. It was calculated that the woman it belonged to was about 100 feet tall as an adult. They did not make loud statements and continued to search. In 2011, they found a pair of fangs, in 2015, a femur, a phalanx, and an entire foot. This is already more than Denisovsky man. So scientists decided that it was somehow inconvenient to leave something like this unattended. Thus, the list of parallel branches of human development was replenished with Homo luzonensis, also known as man from Kalau. Everything with him is still very difficult and unclear, but it is reliably known that they lived literally 40 to 60,000 years ago. They made friends with tools and even hunted a little. Well, let's end the issue with the good old Sinanthropus. This is a fairly ancient branch of the development of Homo. The remains found in Beijing date back to 750,000 years. But what is even more interesting is that the brain volume of the guys was more than 61 cubic inches. This allowed them to use animal remains not only as tools, but also as full-fledged clothing. Also, some scientists believe that Sinanthropes mastered fire. The truth is there is a downside. The damaged remains of some individuals clearly made scientists think that these ancient people did not disdain to eat a fallen comrade. Or maybe they didn't even fall, and maybe they even hunted their own kind as prey. In general, the situation with Sinanthropus is also mysterious. 
Some consider them to be the direct ancestors of the modern mongoloid race, but most scientists still call Sinanthropus a dead-end branch of human development, clearly hinting that Homo sapiens came out of Africa a little over a hundred thousand years ago, and you don't need to dig that far to form the mongoloid race. Moreover, there are enough other problems in archaeology, as you now understand, human evolution did not go along the rails at all. This is a complex, lengthy, and difficult process which was accompanied by a lot of nuances. Dozens of dead-end branches of human development have died out and there is no doubt that dozens more are waiting in the wings to be discovered. Each new breakthrough, like the discovery of the Denisovans, instead of answering questions, raises even more questions. Therefore, let us honor respected anthropologists with a look of respect for their hard and thankless work. And we will closely monitor where it leads. See you again, our historians.